it would have been nice if he wiped the blood off his mouth before he said these words but um never n never never enough bloodshed f for muslims for or arab people for lindsey graham um one of the most vile people who will be <laughs> in our senate right now who if there's any justice and if there is any kind of <laughs> um hell he'll be right at the fieriest part of it once he passes away you see why a lot of people especially all these decades after that would say we have other options here. I mean, this is not a time where our only weapons are dropping nuclear bombs. There's precision weaponry. There's intelligence. We have so much more information. I, I don't know uh, why. So I, I guess what I'm wondering Can is... Can you pause it, actually? I'm sorry, but the thing is that Israel does have precision weaponry. They have actually the most precise weaponry, the most advanced technology in the world when it comes to this. They can bomb city blocks by address. They understand exactly where their weapons and their missiles are going. This yeah. is deliberate. You can hit a uh, refugee camp three times in a row you know who can't do that by the way um and doesn't have an air force doesn't have all of this technology it's uh, the palestinians and hamas they have rockets that are completely substandard and they had their you know ground operation of, of the terror attack where they were able to go through the border but in terms of the symmetry of this it's just completely not it's not even in question in 2023, lack of symmetry. when militaries as advanced as Israel's and yeah. as the United States have choices, is it acceptable to drop bombs on a densely populated civilian area where there are refugees, where people are living, where there are children? Yeah, well, in 2023, who would imagine that someone who survived the Holocaust uh, in, the, in World War II would be killed by Islamic terrorists in Israel in, later in life? In 2023, could anybody imagine a group of people would come into Israel and slaughter families, rape children in front of the parents, burn babies alive, put a baby in the oven? Can you imagine that? I can't imagine that. Here's what I imagine. The destruction of Hamas is non-negotiable. I hate the loss of innocent lives. The day after Hamas is destroyed, I hope we have a better life for the Palestinian people. But I'm not blaming Israel. I'm blaming Hamas. I'm not blaming Israel at all. I know they're trying to limit civilian casualties, and I know Hamas is trying to increase civilian casualties. Is there a threshold for you, and do you think there should be one for the United States government, at which the U.S. would say, let, let's hold off for a second in terms of civilian casualties. Uh, is, there, I, is there a point at no, which no. you would start to question? No, I, if somebody asked us after World War II, is there a limit what you would do to make sure that Japan and Germany don't conquer the world? Is there any limit what Israel should do to the people who are trying to slaughter the Jews? The answer is no, there is no limit, but here's what you need to do, be smart. Let's try to limit civilian casualties the best we can. Let's put humanitarian aid in areas to protect the innocent. I'm all for that, but this idea that Israel has to apologize for attacking Hamas, who's embedded with their own population, needs to stop. The goal is to destroy Hamas. Hamas is creating these casualties, not Israel. I don't think anyone's asking, well, some people may be asking they Israel are. to apologize, but that's not what I'm asking yeah. about. I think the question here is about no, how, they, to me, how they carry out how they carry out the war, and there, there are choices here. But, but you mentioned, get uncomfortable. Uh, and the Israelis have described it this way, they want to eradicate Hamas. And I Me think too. most people agree that that is a reasonable goal. However, how long do you think that that will take? How long? I don't know. Here's is what it, I is think. it reasonable for that? I think we ought to be focusing on the day after Hamas is destroyed, as well as destroying them. Yeah, um, he, he, he can't, doesn't have an answer for that. He gets uncomfortable and pissed off there um, as the he's being cornered. And the fact that he points out, he, he mentions Japan there, should set off alarm bells. Um, yeah. It is American mythology um, and honestly deeply problematic uh, a retelling of history to claim that our dropping of the bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki was in any way justified. Um, the war was very much close to one at that point. There was some dissension within uh, Japan on their surrender and the conditions of it. Uh, but the United States essentially decided that they wanted to be the ones who um, who made the choice, uh, who, who had their finger on the trigger, and um, 
drop the bombs when it didn't necessarily need to happen in order to teach the Japanese government a lesson there. And um, the fact that he's using that justification when we killed hundreds of thousands needlessly after the United States um, and the Allies were victorious is uh, deeply, deeply unsettling. Their position is so bad that even I think with not great interviewing, um, Lindsey Graham looks at that bad because the re- re- that's still laundering. This is not an anti-terror operation anymore. The no. idea that bombing a refugee uh, um, uh, uh, camp three times in a row is going to lead to less terrorism is absolutely ludicrous. Nobody believes it. Not not the Israeli government doing it. They think it's going to lead to more terrorism that they can then use to continue ethnic cleanses, which, oh, yes. which is what they're doing. And so, like to say that they say they just want to get rid of Hamas. That's not really all that they're saying. That's maybe like what the uh, IDF spokespeople given to uh, you are saying. You actually look at members of Netanyahu's party, and they are saying we need to get rid of Gaza. We need to flatten Gaza. Mm-hmm. Um, so like we're still laundering a ethnically cleansing government right now to your point um the israeli press is doing a way better job of covering what israel is actually doing than the freaking united states press and our politicians this is from the times of israel this is a center-right publication about the uh appointed head of the knesset west bank subcommittee this mk zvai sukkot okay I'm going to read this really quickly. Ultranationalist MK and radical settlement activist Zvai Sukkot was appointed Wednesday to serve as the chairman of the Knesset Subcommittee for Judea and Samaria, a.k.a. the West Bank, under the permanent uh, Knesset Foreign Affairs and Defense Committee. The appointment was condemned by numerous opposition MKs as well as anti-settlement groups who pointed out that Sukkot has a long history of radicalism in the settlement movement and that settler violence in the West Bank has spiked dramatically since October 7th uh, Hamas uh, assault on Israel in which over 1,400 people were massacred, most of them civilians. Why is this specific member so extreme? Sukkot's extremist activities have not stopped since he became an MK. Um, But before that, before becoming an MK, Sukkot was a a prominent radical settler activist and was arrested at least three times for his actions during demonstrations outside the home of the head of the IDF Central Command. Sukkot, who is an MK for the ultra-nationalist Religious Zionist Party, was also arrested in 2010 by the police due to Shin Bet's suspicions that he was involved in the arson of a mosque in the northern West Bank, close to where he lived in the uh, Yitzhar settlement. He was not charged over the incident, however. Sukkot was not drafted into the IDF after he said his, in his interview with the recruitment office that he had no trust in the military due to its participation in the evacuation of settlers from Gaza and northern West Bank settlements during the 2005 disengagement plan the idf declared him quote unsuitable for military service opposition mks and condemned uh opposition mks condemned sukkot's appointment with labor leader mk uh, merav mikali calling him quote one of the most dangerous people in israel a racist pyromaniac terror supporter shin bet target this guy was too extreme for the idf and was just appointed to head the West Bank subcommittee in the Knesset. That's a terrorist. We're talking about terrorism. A terrorist is leading the West Bank subcommittee. It's a terror government. So, I, 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 can, can the Western press get on this and call this what it is? Is the center-right times of Israel calling this what it is? 